Hello, and welcome to this webinar on the importance of minerals for beef cattle production. I'm Megan Van Emmen, Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. Now, as we move into minerals in general, um, one thing to keep in mind, they make up a very small proportion of the principal cations and anions within the body, only about 3.5%. The other 96% of the body's elemental mass are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Now that 3.5% is made up of all of our uh, macro and micro minerals, so of that 3.5%, almost half, about 46% of that is calcium, another 29% is phosphorus, sulfur, sodium chloride, and magnesium make up a roughly 25% of the total minerals, with our trace elements making up only about three-tenths of a percent of our total mineral mass. So even though they are a relatively small proportion in the body, they are extremely important for our biological processes. Now if we look at our interaction wheel here of our minerals, um, as you can see a lot of minerals interact with each other antagonistically. So if we look at our trace minerals focusing on cobalt, zinc, iodine, manganese, copper, and selenium, if we focus on the big one that I, you know, that has a lot of antagonistic effects from several other minerals, if we look at copper here, so we have cadmium, iron, phosphorus, sulfur, zinc, and molybdenum all can have an antagonistic effect on copper alone. So it's highly dependent on your soil type, any sort of other feeds you're, you are giving your livestock, which can cause uh, copper to be unabsorbed in the rumen, and therefore we could see some copper deficiency issues. And we will get more into these antagonistic effects in our microminerals uh, recorded webinar. Now if we focus on our predominant macro minerals, we have potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, sodium, and calcium. Once again, several antagonistic effects. If we look at uh, calcium here, we have magnesium, phosphorus, uh, fluoride, zinc, can all have an effect on calcium absorption in our livestock. Now, um, the big ones that we can alter uh, through our mineral supplements is the ratio of calcium and phosphorus in those minerals. You have examples such as 12-12, 12-6, 12-8, and that's just indicating the percent of calcium to the percent of phosphorus. Now we can also in the springtime include magnesium in our mineral supplements. Um, this one is especially important if we're in that uh, kind of early springtime, late spring, when our forages begin to grow and become lush and green. And we need to provide that additional magnesium to our cows, especially those lactating cows. Now I also included iodine here um, because typically we don't see that as an added um, mineral in our supplements. Um, we can have it added but it's just not a typical one we would see, and similar would be cobalt. Some minerals do include cobalt, some do not. Now the big three that are antagonistic to most of our micro minerals are sulfur, molybdenum, and iron. These are the big three that uh, we experience here in Montana, especially sulfur, not only in our feeds and our soils, but also in our water sources. The same can be said for iron. We can have high iron feed sources and high iron water. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, our animals are very tolerant of iron. And so we more worry about its negative impacts on our microminerals such as zinc and copper and manganese. Now molybdenum we mostly see in our soils and this is one where we can see hugely negative impacts on our copper absorption causing copper deficiency symptoms and we'll discuss that more in our microminerals uh, recorded webinar. Now minerals have four main functions, structural, physiological, catalytic, 
hormonal, or regulatory. For structural, the main one we consider is bone. Uh, calcium and phosphorus uh, come together to form a hydroxyapatite into a protein matrix to form our bone. We also have magnesium, fluoride, and silica, which are huge components of bones and teeth. And then other structural components such as muscle proteins and molecular and membrane structures with our zinc, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now physiological functions um, such as electrolytes in our body, bodily fluids, uh, soft tissues, acid base and water balance, osmotic pressure, excitability of our muscles and nerves, as well as having calcium play a major role in blood clotting. Catalytic or enzymatic reactions, uh, phosphorus is needed for our metabolic reactions for energy transfer and creating cellular energy. Um, also a major part in DNA and RNA, as well as iron, uh, manganese, sulfur, zinc, which are all components of RNA as well. There are also several other enzymes that have biologic importance, such as selenium with glutathione peroxidase and an for antioxidant activity, as well as then cobalt uh, for formation of our B vitamins. Now for hormonal or regulatory functions, main ones to consider would be our thyroid hormones with iodine, as well as uh, insulin having zinc and sulfur as part of its main components, um, any sort of signal transduction with calcium, as well as influencing our transcription processes. Now, um, mineral deficiency and toxicities. So there are several which will be covered in our macro and our micro mineral uh, webinars. Uh, the first one being grass tetany. Um, obviously in the springtime with those lactating cattle, we can see uh, grass tetany, with, which is a magnesium deficiency. Um, we can also see this in the wintertime with our potassium levels being low as well as calcium. Um, in the feedlot industry, we can see urinary calculi if we don't have that proper calcium to phosphorus ratio, um, the ideal ratio being two to one. So if uh, calcium drops below uh, one to one with phosphorus, we can start to see urinary calculi or also known as water belly in our feedlot animals. And so maintaining that ideal two to one ratio can minimize those impacts. Um, Sulfur toxicity would be polio and cephalomalacia. Um, so this can occur in areas where there are high sulfur levels, both in the feed as well as in our water. And then sulfur itself can exacerbate the issues with copper and molybdenum, um, rendering copper unabsorbed. And so we might also see some copper deficiency symptoms. We can also see white muscle disease in those animals that are selenium deficient. Um, this can be especially prevalent in those newborn calves if those cows have been selenium deficient. Um, and then with milk feed in that early lactation period as those cows reach their peak lactation, we can see some calcium deficiency issues. Um, reproductively, looking at specifically copper, zinc, and manganese, we can see several issues with our both females and male livestock. Um, copper deficiency can lead to embryonic death, decreased conception rates, delayed puberty in the female, um, in the male, decreased libido, as well as spermatogenesis. Zinc deficiency could lead to increased dystocia issues uh, or an abnormal estrus period for those cattle. In the male, impaired growth, delayed puberty, uh, decreased testicular size and libido. And then with manganese, um, which I consider one of the most important trace minerals for our reproduction purposes in our cattle, um, we can see increase in the anestrous period, increased abortion rates, uh, decreased ovarian con activity, all leading to reduced conception rates. And then in our males, um, increase in abnormal sperm. Now, if we look at our macro mineral requirements, these are all represented as a percentage. So calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and sulfur. 
So we just have growing and finishing cattle, gestating, and early lactation classes represented. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is our bulls do not have an established tr uh, macro or micro mineral requirements. So when we are de developing our mineral programs for our bulls, we typically use the growing and finishing cattle uh, requirements. So if we just look at calcium here, noticing that uh, in gestating cattle, about 0.3%, and then due to that lactation demand, this calcium requirement increases again. Now with phosphorus, um, rather increased in our growing and finishing cattle, about 0.2% in early lactation and gestating. Um, with magnesium, as we would expect when animals begin to lactate, they're going to draw more on those magnesium stores and therefore that requirement is going to increase. Uh, similar with our potassium as well as sodium. Now um, sodium, we typically uh, consider this just with our salts that are included in, um, in our diets or in our mineral supplements. Um, we don't have a chloride requirement established here. And this is because mostly the salt is going to meet those requirements. Now we do have a requirement for sulfur at 0.15% and this sulfur is used for insulin formation as well as amino acids for protein. Um, so it is required even though if we do get into those excessive amounts above this 0.4% we can start to see those antagonistic effects on our trace minerals. Now if we're looking at our trace mineral requirements all represented as parts per million, once again no bowl requirements have been established. Now we have chromium and molybdenum included on our table here even though requirements for these two trace minerals have not been established, they are required within our livestock. But um, if we look at most of our requirements, they do not change depending on the class of cattle except for our manganese. And this is mainly due to that importance in reproduction for our gestating uh, livestock. One thing I would like to point out is selenium. The requirement is only 0.1 part per million and Selenium is one we need to really watch in our mineral supplements as well as our feeds because we can go from deficient to toxic quite rapidly. And typically in the southwest part of Montana we see selenium deficient soils and so we need to look at adding selenium into some of our mineral supplements and for the remainder of the state we have adequate areas for our soils but we do have pockets of toxicity so we want to ensure that we're getting our forages tested in some of these areas to determine if selenium needs to be included in our mineral supplement or not. With that I'm Megan Van Emmen Extension Beef Cattle Specialist with Montana State University. Thanks and have a great day.